Are you ready for the best quantitative reasoning workout ever? All right, two things I have to do first. Make sure you know how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide without using long addition, long subtraction, long multiplication, and long division. And the second is the divisibility rules. So I'll link to both of those videos down below. Make sure to watch those uh, before you do this workout. All right, now we can get started. Uh, so what we're gonna do is prime boxing. That means we're gonna find the prime box of different numbers. Uh, if you're not sure what a prime box is, well, it's just a box that contains the prime numbers of a certain number. So for example, 12 is four times three. Three is a prime number, four isn't. So we have to break that down further to two times two. So the prime box of 12 would have two squared times three to the one. So that's the contents of the prime box of 12. Just another couple of examples, 18, that's three times three times two. So it would be two to the power of one, three squared. That's the prime box of 18. One more example, uh, 100. 100 is 10 squared. 10 is two times five. So the prime box of 100 would have two squared, five squared. All right, so what are we doing in this video? We're finding the prime boxes of random big numbers and we're gonna do that right now. Okay, so I asked Google to give me a random number between 100 and 1,000, and Google gave me the number 555. So I'm gonna go ahead and find the prime box of 555. First, I look at the number and ask myself, is there an obvious factor that I could pull out there? And in the case of 555, it's obviously a multiple of five because the units digit is five. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull a five out of 555. And what does it mean to pull a five out? It means to divide 555 by five. I don't know what 555 divided by five is, but I'm going to estimate and adjust. So again, that's in the video that I linked below. Instead of 555, I'll think of it as 500 plus 50 plus five and divide each of those separately by five. Uh, so I would get 110 and one or 111. All right, so that's the beginning of our prime factorization tree. For 555, we have a five and we have 111. I'm going to circle the five because it's a prime number, so I'm done with that side of the tree. And now I have to focus on the number 111. Now, what's an obvious factor of 111? Uh, well, certainly not two because 111 is odd. The next prime factor that I'll check is three. I'm just gonna work my way up the prime factors. And three, it turns out, is a factor of 111. I know this because I added the digits of 111, one plus one plus one. So three is a factor of the sum of the digits of 111. Therefore, three is a factor of 111. And again, I talk about that in a separate video about the divisibility rules, and that's linked below as well. So. 111, I'm going to have to divide that by three now. And the way I'm going to do that is think of it as, instead of 111, think of it as 90 plus 21 over three and divide each of those separately. And that would give me 37. So 111 is three times 37. Those are the two branches for that tree. I'm going to circle the three because that's a prime number. And now I'm going to focus on 37. Maybe you recognize that 37 is a prime number, Maybe you don't, but now I'm gonna show you how to find out whether or not a number is prime. So I'm gonna go one by one through the prime factors, starting from two, and ask myself, is it a factor of 37? But I don't have to go all the way up to 37 because factors work in pairs. So let's uh, just do a sidebar here for a second and see what that means. If you look at the number 36, the factors, the factor pairs of 36, are 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. So in each of those pairs, we have one small number and one big number. And as we go through the pairs, we see that those numbers converge. They get closer and closer to each other until they meet at 6 times 6. What's the significance of 6 in the context of 36? Well, six is the square root of 36. So as you look at those pairs, you'll realize that each pair has one number that's lower than the square root, and its partner 
is above the square root. And as we go through the pairs, they get closer and closer to the square root of the number until they meet right there. So the idea here is that if I couldn't find a factor for the number below the square root, I can stop searching. There won't be a number that, uh, that goes with it, that pairs with it above the square root. So we only have to check for factors up to and including the square root of whichever number we're looking at. In the case of 37, I'm going to stop looking after 5 because if I'm checking 7, well, 7 is already bigger than the square root of 37. How do I know? Because 7 is the square root of 49. So if I couldn't find a factor below 7 that is a factor of 37, I can stop searching. Luckily, there's not that many prime factors below 7. There's only 2, 3, and 5. So if none of those is a factor of 37, guess what? 37 is a prime number. And now I can circle the 37 as well, and I have found the prime box of 555. It is 3 to the 1, 5 to the 1, 37 to the power of 1. Are you ready to do another one? This time I asked Google to give me a random number between 1,000 and 10,000, and it gave me 2,108. So is there a, an obvious factor of 2,108 that I could start uh, to use to uh, branch this number out? Well, I notice that if I look at just the last two digits as a number, it's the number eight, and that is a multiple of four. So I'm going to go ahead and use four as my factor. Again, I talk about the divisibility rule for four in the video linked below. So I know that 2,108 is divisible by four because the last two digits are essentially eight, and that's divisible by four, therefore the entire number is divisible by four. So what is 2,108 divided by four? I'll think of it as 2,000 over 4 plus 100 over 4 plus 8 over 4. Uh, so that's 525 and another 2, so that's 527. Uh, so our first two branches for 2,108 are 4, which I will not circle because it's not a prime number, and 527, which I don't know, I'm going to have to think about that one. Uh, let's uh, finish off the 4 first, so we'll split that into 2 times 2, circle each of those 2s. Uh, so now focusing on 527, it's not divisible by 2, because it's odd. It's not divisible by 3, because the sum of the digits is 14, and 14 is not divisible by 3. It's not divisible by 5, because it ends in neither a 5 nor a 0. Is it divisible by 7? Well, to check that, I'll think of 527 as 490, which I know is divisible by 7, because 49 is divisible by 7. Uh, so 490 plus 37. Is 37 divisible by 7? No, it's not. So then this number is not divisible by 7. The next prime number to check is 11. And dividing 527 by 11, I think for that one I'll go with 550 over 11 minus 23 over 11. Uh, now 23 is not divisible by 11, so 527 is not divisible by 11. The next prime to check is 13. And by the way, how far up the primes do I need to go before I conclude that 527 is a prime number? If I go all the way up to 29, that's already too far because 29 squared would be just under 30 squared, which is 900, so that's too much. And the last prime, or the biggest prime before 29, would be 23. So I only have to check the primes up to 23. If none of the primes up to 23 is a factor of 527, then I can conclude that 527 is a prime number. So is 527 divisible by 13? Well, I know that 520 is divisible by 13 because I know that 52 is divisible by 13. Uh, check that with me. So 13 plus another 13 is 26. 26 doubled is 52. So 52 is a multiple of 13, therefore 520 is a multiple of 13. And we had 527. So if 520 is a multiple of 13, guess what? Adding 7 and getting to 527 will not be a multiple of 13. It would have a remainder of 7 if I divided that by 13. Uh, so 13 is not a factor either. Uh, next, we'll have to check 17. That's the next prime. 
And if we divide 527 by 17, I'm just thinking of multiples of 17 that I'm familiar with, and maybe you're not familiar with any, so you just check 17 plus 17, that's 34, plus another 17, that's 51. Well, that means that 510 is a multiple of 17, and 527 is 510 plus 17. Well, if 510 is divisible by 17, and 17 is divisible by 17, and guess what? 527 is divisible by 17. You'd get 510 over 17, which is 30. Remember, we checked 17 plus 17 plus 17. That was how we got to 51. So that's three 17s. So 510 would have 30 of them, 30 17s. So 30 plus a single 17 to get to 527. Uh, so that means that the factors of 527 are 17 and 31. 17 is a prime number, 31 is also a prime number. So we're done, we had two twos, we have a 17 and we have a 31. So the prime box of 2108, two squared times 17 to the power of one times 31 to the power of one, and we're done. Are you willing to commit to doing one of these every time before you brush your teeth and every time after you brush your teeth. That's four per day. Let me know in the comments below if you're going to do that for the next couple of weeks. I promise you, if you do this, if you do four of these every day for two weeks, you will be unrecognizable from where you are right now. It is by far the best workout for quantitative reasoning that I've ever come across. And I strongly encourage you to adopt it for yourself. If you have any questions about any of this, comments below is where to go. I'll help you out through there. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click that little bell to notify you when I publish new videos. See you next time.